Phil Jackson, I just wanted to shout him out. I hated Phil Jackson so much when he was coaching against my Knicks. Phil Jackson was a Nick in the 70s, and they won world titles in the early 70s. It's hard to imagine, but yes, there was a time when the Knicks won NBA titles. 70, and they won one again in 73. And uh, I know, it's like, <laughs> if you're my age, yes, it was before I was born. You know, most Knicks fans I know refer to the glory years as the 90s. We're like, ah, oh, the 90s, those were the glory years, except only one small problem. We didn't win a title in the 90s. <laughs> No, ma'am. Lost to the Rockets in the finals. Lost to the San Antonio Spurs one year in the finals. Uh, but we never actually won a title. You know, we played a lot of hard fought series against Reggie Miller and the Pacers, a lot of hard fought series against Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. But, yes, as a Knicks fan, the glory days were very much the 90s, if you're my age, except you didn't actually bring home total glory. But Phil Jackson, who had coached against the Knicks quite successfully as the coach of the Bulls, ultimately became the general manager of the Knicks, and they really had a forgettable tenure where he wasn't terribly involved with the team. So I, I'm not on the best of terms with Phil Jackson when it comes to his performance for the Knicks, but he said something I just thought was so useful over the weekend. He was on a podcast, and uh, he was talking about how he doesn't watch the NBA anymore because it's gotten too politicized. Here it is, clip 31. Do you uh, still watch a lot of basketball? or No. I don't. Tell me about that. When and did you stop immediately from the time you stopped coaching? No, I didn't. I watched some of the game evolve and decided, and they went into the lockout year and they did something that was kind of wanky. They did a bubble down in Orlando mm -hmm. and all the teams that could qualify mm -hmm. went down there and mm -hmm. stayed down there. Mm -hmm. No audience. And they had things on their back like, you know, justice and... Uh, yeah, I made a little funny thing like, uh, you know, Justice just went to the basket and uh, equal opportunity just knocked him down. And uh, somebody, I uh, had another name for a guy who has jersey in the back of a jersey, had some other slogan. So my grandkids thought that was pretty funny to, to, to play up those names. <laughs> now, of course, the reaction from the social justice warriors over at the NBA was... <laughs> You know, I'm laughing. Yeah, that's me laughing. But do you want to know what the social justice warriors over at the NBA are not there? No! No, no, no. <laughs> They're not happy. <laughs> Here's Jalen Rose, went on Twitter. Now, I want you to understand before I play Jalen Rose's comments. Okay, the NBA benefits more from the actual oppression of human beings than any corporate entity in this country. Okay, what I mean by that is the NBA is always running, end racism, promote equal opportunity. The NBA's biggest financial benefactor on the world stage is China, the biggest human rights abuser in the world. The NBA does whatever China wants. China is literally putting Muslim Uyghurs into forced labor camps. China is harvesting their organs. China is employing child labor and slave labor. Do the equality warriors at the NBA say anything about it? The answer would be no. Nope. Do the equality warriors at Nike, the oppression fighters, say anything about it? The answer would be no. Nope. When LeBron James says, just do it, that's him talking to the six-year-old kid selling his sneakers. Shut up. Don't ask how come you're not in kindergarten. Just do it. Just do it. But here is Jalen Rose trying to frame Phil Jackson as some type of a racist for his position that the NBA is becoming too activist. Now, in truth, Phil Jackson is correct. Why is he correct? Because sports used to be something that united this country. It was a place to put our political differences aside. Okay, you could be Republican, you could be Democrat, anything in between, libertarian, doesn't matter. The point is for the next two hours, we don't have to think about that difference. We don't have to fight. We just have to cheer for our teams and drink $22 beers throw our worries away while we create new worries on our credit card statement. That was the whole point of sports. And I don't begrudge anybody the right to use their platform however they see fit. Muhammad Ali was one of the biggest activists in the world. But Muhammad Ali actually gave up the heavyweight championship of the world when it was the most prestigious title in all of sports because he so vehemently opposed the Vietnam War. All these guys are doing is tweeting social justice messages and trying to get rich off the very people they claim to be fighting on behalf of. 
LeBron James isn't so concerned about oppression that he's given up the Nike money. No, ma'am. They're just yelling about it here. So you take your eyes off of the fact that it's happening over there. He's a lousy dad, but he's right. But here's Jalen Rose trying to frame this as Phil Jackson being Jim Crow. Clip 32. You can't make this up. Hall of Fame coach and 11-time champion Phil Jackson claims to have stopped supporting the NBA because it became too political when it went into the bubble and was catering to certain audiences by putting slogans on the back of jerseys and Black Lives Matter on the floor. The same Phil Jackson that won championships with some of the greatest black athletes in the history of the game, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, made millions on their backs and off their sweat equity. You're sitting up watching the game with your grandkids and y'all think it's funny when justice passes the ball to equal opportunity? When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. So stop watching forever. That was absolutely dreadful. Yeah, you think it's funny when justice knocks over equal opportunity? Well, yes, yes, we do. Correct the mundo. Why? For two reasons. One, all of this corporate activism is a scam because the NBA is doing more business in China than anywhere else in the world. Again, justice and equal opportunity are on the backs of the NBA jerseys because they want you to believe that black people are oppressed in this country. Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. Okay, the NBA is a league that's 80% black with an average annual salary of five and a half million dollars. Okay, you can't be oppressed if you're making five and a half million dollars a year to shoot buckets. Why? Because there's no way society would report would support such a massive, massive market, a nine billion dollar entity, unless they were well past the race of the players. You understand? The NBA is proof of just how inclusive and accepting we've become on race. It's something we should be celebrating as a source of upward mobility, as a source of unity in this country. But instead, what the Democrats do again and again and again is they try to use the most successful people amongst us to sell us oppression. Democrats just call everyone racist so they go along with their stupid ideas. Totally. That's what they're doing in the NBA. And to be clear, since the NBA went activist, since the NFL went activist, since Major League Baseball went activist, did our streets become any safer? The answer would be no. Our country become any more united? The answer would be no. No, it's a corporate virtue signal. And most of it's done to buy them points with the outrage mob. By sim but while simultaneously distracting the rest of the country from the fact that they're putting things like justice and equal opportunity on the backs of all of their jerseys, while the people in the countries they do business in don't know what any of that stuff even happens to be. Oh, you're right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right.